Uh, so this week and next week we've got Drew and hey, look at that right on time. I tell the man right after 12 and he shows up right after 12. Let me bring him in here. Hello, Drew. Hello, Drew. Drew's eating lunch. <laughs> What are you eating, Drew? A little peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mmm, mother's milk to me. That's right, Baby brother. That's right. That's you know, milk. how can you go wrong with that? You can't. You just can't. I needed to get something in. I was trying to hurry, hurry, hurry before I clicked on the join video button, but you know. You know, when I first started doing these lives, I used to always stress out, like, this setup and then that and this. And then I realized, you know, it's so much more authentic if I'm, like, completely, like, out of sorts and don't know what I'm doing, you know, right. I'm just kind of, like, flying from the seat of my pants. Um, <laughs> yes, Paula Free, I'm on the show. Uh, I'm going to send links out because, like, people, like, I tell them where to go and they just, for some reason, they just don't get here. I tell them to go to the Facebook group. There is the link. There you go. So how are you today on our pre-Thanksgiving uh, special? You know you have next week off. Uh, I, I don't have next week off. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, for, I'm not a school us. teacher. So for oh, us. I have next week off for us. Oh, yeah, for yes, us. Yeah, that's for true. I need that. yes. Thursday. I'm uh, gonna... what's, whose birthday is it? If my birthday is on Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Yeah, so... Anybody want to give guests or give the give gifts to me? You can be a guest without being giving gifts, but if you want to give gifts, I will take them. Damn, we got to do that. We need to send Marty gifts. That's how I'm saying right please. there. I've had a rough year. <laughs> what are you uh, speaking of Thanksgiving? What are you doing for Thanksgiving this year? Um, a friend's having me over. Um, nice. you know, it's it's very nice. The timing's perfect. Um, as you know, I've gone through a little bit of a life change. <laughs> just just a little. Just a little bit of one. Did I send you my video? Which one? Uh, the one I just did. I don't know if I sent that to you. You better send it to me. I haven't oh, seen it. I haven't. It sent sounds it like something you. I need. Oh yeah, it's pretty fun. I can't play it here because I've used. So I like. I literally tried to put it in YouTube in a private channel and then share it there. But I've basically used so much music and popular stuff that like this video will never be seen because of copyright. Print. Oh, whatever. So I'm sharing it via um, my stuff. I've got it in my own cloud. So I'll give you the link so you can look at it. I think of 20 things right now to be thankful for for this year. 2022 right. has certainly not been, you know, 2020 and 2021 were there by themselves. You know, I think everybody agreed 2020 felt like 18 years in one, right? Because it seemed like it's been out forever. Easily. So. Yeah. This has been, this has definitely had its challenges. Don't get me wrong, but I'd say there's, there's far more positives than there were negatives this year. Um, uh, Paul is asking, uh, does Par Lumber do, uh, donate or do anything with uh, sponsorships or nonprofit stuff? Do you know yeah, about that? I'm involved with the Home Builders Association uh, of Portland and Home Building Federation, which is also their charitable arm. So we do uh donations to them we work together with them with teams and send them workers essentially on some of their job sites when they're working with the houseless mm -hmm. we're working on some of these newer communities that get built up specifically these tiny home communities we did one last year at the end of 2021 and into 22 uh, we continue to work together with them and so there's other ones as well we've worked with first story which is another one that's a, a nonprofit. Uh, we've worked with habitat for humanity uh, we've worked for uh, women in, in green building, uh, as well as women in uh, the workforce, several different organizations that we work with. And we are happy to continue to look at ways that we can be in our community. We are, a, we're, you know, we, and I say that proudly, we are a family owned company and, and we care deeply about the, the, the Northwest. That's, that's we great. I, mean, I know in the Northwest. So I know Paul has talked a lot about in, in the past, she said, you know, that sometimes there's a question related to, you know, building products building ramps when people are you know coming back because she works a lot with you know people that are in that community so um and she may have a case where she's got the builder or the handyman or the people or the whatever 
that will come together. Now it's just a matter of looking for building materials and say, saying, hey, can we get these for nothing or get these for next to nothing? And so, uh, you know, we have those opportunities. Those are presented to us on a fairly regular basis, uh, whether it's through the HBA or not. So I'd say throw those at me. I am always happy to take a look at those and see what we can do to help. So I should just basically connect you two. Yes. Connect your dots. Absolutely. Okay. Should I give her, let's see, do I have your email here in yeah. your notes? Yeah, just have her send me my, send me the, the drew.roberts at par.com. Okay. I'll do that. Do, do, do. That's a man. Cool. She said, yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And here you go, Paula. If I can get it in there. Boop. Boop. There you go, Sister Bear. So at least I know we've we've helped one viewer. <laughs> uh, so I, did I tell you I was getting bariatric surgery? You did. Yeah. When was that coming up? Well, um, I think, um, did I tell you about the doctors, uh, the surgeons uh, switch on my target weight? Oh, no. That has been the best thing. Oh, hello. Hey, I'm live right now on my show. You know that. Hey, buddy. And I basically have you on the phone. So, hey, everybody, this is Gabrielle. See, and I'm actually holding the phone so you can see her. I got her, I got the picture that you sent me today up to the camera. Hi. Yeah. That's okay. Say hi to Drew. Hi. <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye. Okay. So um, the surgeon, uh, he gave me this target weight to hit. And when I saw him last, it was hilarious because um I apologized because when I first went in for the, the actual check for this bariatric procedure, I was very, um, this is called what it was, I was arrogant and cocky. He said, you know, it's going to take a little over a year, maybe for you to actually get your surgery. And I'm like, get away. Six months, doc. I'll be ready. Not a problem. Give me the target. I'll hit it. I'm a gator. I'm me. I know me. So I'm, I'm coming up on a little over a year while we're talking. And I said, okay, I'm sorry for being so arrogant. And um, I've been in this 13 to 15 pound window that I can't get past before they can schedule me. Yeah. And so we're sitting there talking and he said, well, I got to be honest, you know, I tell you um, when we're doing this target weight, I ba base the target weight on your body mass index, your health and where you're at, at the time. And I went to the highest level. So there's a range actually about, we dropped that to eight pounds, which is more of a target versus the 13 to 15 where you were. I'm like, serious? <laughs> I usually don't make out with men, but I want to right now. I want to kiss you. So I just have to lose eight pounds now. That's, it seems a little more attainable. It's a little more attainable. Now you have to lose that by when. There's no, I mean, it's not like a by when, it's I can't schedule until I lose the eight pounds. I've been steadily losing, you know, two to three pounds every time I go in for a weight. Gotcha. So it's been a steady drip, but I think you don't point. have like a target that you're trying to hit like a date, like, okay, I want to lose this eight pounds by January 1st. It's a, it's a, I, I wish I could do that. I mean, cause I, I've told people goal setting, it's better to have that as a target date, yeah. but you can't, what I've learned, um, I never thought I was an emotional eater. I am. Um, I didn't take into account life that happens all around you that affects you. Um, sleeping, that's a big deal because I wasn't doing it. Um, the stress and stuff that I deal with, you know, emotional stuff I deal with, like I've got uh, major, I've got uh, major depressive disorder, some other things going on. And I just never really took all that into account. And then as I get older, the metabolism slows down, all the things that I used to like to do, well, if you hit that depressive disorder thing, you just don't feel like doing it. Metabolism slows down, then you just can't. Right. So with my arthritis, I can't, there's a lot of things I just could not do anymore. So that was frustrating because I, I just, I couldn't even work out. So it was driving me nuts. 
getting crazy. I'm like, okay. Uh, when I moved everything, we moved out of the house. I was sore. My whole body was aching for like about, geez, almost, two, almost two weeks after I moved everything out of the house, mm. I got cortisone shots in my knees. So I could actually finally walk without, you know, pain. And, uh, thank God, uh, I'm mobile again. So I'm just looking at those eight pounds and I'm trying to think of all the things I can keep doing to, um, you know, keep dropping. I don't know if I can run yet. It's just interesting how much, it's kind of interesting how much we take for granted when it comes to fitness, you know, Um, especially as we age, Uh, you know, some people are based on their genes, their genetic makeup, based on their heredity. They it's different for everybody. Everybody's physiology is different. Um, you know, oftentimes I get asked about, you know, what works for me and I try to, to, I tend to be pretty good about making sure that I preempt any conversation with this is how it works for me, right? Because it's going to be different for the next person. And people will ask me, well, what kind of shoes do you wear? Or what's your diet? Or how often do you exercise? Or for how long do you exercise? Or how often do you do strength training? I mean, and the list goes on and on of the questions that I will receive. And I do my best to try to, again, preempt those with every one of us is different. And so, for instance, you know, one person might need to see a physical therapist once every other week in order to continue to maintain proper alignment and form, whereas another person just happens to have naturally good form and they don't need to see a physical therapist every other week. But you don't know that until you get into it a little bit deeper and you begin to explore you know, what are ways that, that I can, I can move better or lose weight easier or maintain my weight better, or, uh, you know, what is best joint health? Um, the one thing I will say about it is things have changed dramatically in the last, even just in the last 10 years, the amount of information that's out there now for us to be better in regards to our fitness and our health is far greater today than it was even just 10 years ago. Um, you know, the more information that's out there, the better, you you know, you are even starting, I remember joking about it a little bit, I'm going to divert for a second. But I remember joking about uh, mental health conversations where you can go online and you can see a therapist uh, virtually, right. And at first, when that first hit, I joked and said, you know, can you really make a connection with somebody (laughs) virtually? versus face to face. That was my joke. And I and I knew the answer in advance. I knew it before I even asked the question. But it was the joke with it was I took a mindset of a Gen Xer of being somebody born in the 1900s, right? Born in 1970. I mm-hmm. took this this perspective of well we have to be face to face. We can't do this thing virtually. And and that's that perspective. And it's easy to have this old school so to speak OG mentality. But that doesn't make it right. Right. In fact, one of the things we're finding is, is that more and more people, depending upon your age, depending upon your um, cultural background, depending upon your ethnicity, depending upon so many different things, it's not fair just to pigeonhole and say, well, all therapy has to be face to face. Right. That doesn't work that way. No, it well, it's the same thing with fitness. So when you go back and look at the way we, we do fitness, do, do we say that, well, you have to exercise X amount of minutes per day or X amount of minutes per week? Is it the same for everybody? And there is so much variation. You can't just write a single book and say, yep, that'll take care of everybody. No. And in fact, I mean, you know, you and I, just as, a, as an example, there's a massive difference between you and I. And we are two people out of how many millions and millions and millions? And so the point point being is if there's that much of a difference between you and I, and while I may find some similarities with with some people, I'll find great disparity or great differences between myself and and somebody like yourself. And so there isn't a one size fits all process. And that's why it's so important. I think that when it comes to fitness, it really does come down to, you know, you want to seek as much advice as you can for sure. But then you really have to make sure that you have a tailored, individualized plan for your own fitness. It isn't, you can't go on to YouTube and say, well, I'll just follow what that guy does. Or no, I'll, I'll, no you can't. Yeah. And you really do have to have a tailored thing that works for you. For Like you said, life happens, mm-hmm. right? You, 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 when you talk about your, your eating, for instance, and sometimes you, you, know, you binge eat based on emotion. 
I mean, not everybody deals with that. Right. And so it's so important to, act, to, to recognize that when it comes to your fitness, you also have to enter in when you eat, how often you eat, the kinds of food you eat, how you process it, um, not getting too gross, but I mean, also how your body processes it, how often it processes it. And you have to have a tailored plan for your fitness as it's affected by everything, your mental health, your diet, your everything. So, yeah, and I, I literally had to lose that mindset of diets. I mean, because really, it's, it's lifestyle. It's, you you yeah. have to think about what your lifestyle is because there's so many different things that come out. There's this, this, you know, body for life, paleo. I mean, there's all these different things that come out and I'm sure they're all great for whatever person responds to they, it. They work for some Everybody's people. Everybody's metabolism's different. Right. Everybody responds differently. Yeah. And so to me, and that's what I've, I've, I've told my nutritionists and my doctors. Yeah, I'm overweight. The, the great thing about what my system is, I don't have the high, I don't have the high blood pressure. I don't have the, the high cholesterol. I don't have all the other icky stuff because I eat clean. I, mm -hmm. I keep all the nasty stuff out. Now, luck, luckily I do that because I think if it was the other thing, if I was just eating everything that was in my face, well, I'd probably be a diabetic and everything else going with it. So it's just been a matter of, okay, let me change. Just because I'm up and I can't sleep doesn't mean I should be eating because I'm up late and I can't sleep. I should just, if I'm up, I should just be up and oh, well, I'm not eating. Simple. But that's the worst time in the worst time to be eating is when you're up <laughs> at late at night. Your body's not metabolizing. It. It's not doing anything. Your body's at rest. So I had to learn that drinking lots of water. I had to change that. Wasn't doing that enough. Your right. body will retain it if you're not drinking it. It's um, a good reminder. Uh, the whole thing about yeah <laughs> bottom line hey, drink your water food. kids drink your water um knowing that um i don't have i mean i have to tell people look i'm a big guy but you don't have to fill my plate you know and my exes always say well you don't have to eat it all right <laughs> that's the that's like the wrong just don't chatted online the a plate. couple of times too with a couple of, of bigger people that run and when i say bigger i i don't i don't say it from a um from the mindset of trying to suggest someone is obese or overweight. Instead, it's just, there are people that are bigger period, right? Huh. Whether you're five foot eight or you're six foot eight. I mean, there are people that are just bigger. They have different body sizes. There's a lot of different body sizes out there. And so one of the things that's important to recognize is it's not so simple as to say that someone is just overweight. You can't just underline that and make that a blanket statement. Instead, I think this is one of those, again, one of those awareness pieces that we're coming to terms with is that some people actually can be healthy and might they might appear as as a a again og perspective of being o overweight but what you might find out is is that they're healthy at that weight right and so instead of the the i'm i'm hoping that in the years to come that we get better from a body shaming standpoint and i i i'll tell you what i can sit here and tell you that this is one of those cases where I'm thankful I'm not a woman. And I don't mean that in any derogatory standpoint, but women, oh my gosh, they, they deal with body shaming by our, by a, a society that says it has to be a certain way. Yeah. And, and it's, so a, it's one it's, size fits all. Yeah. And that's I, not I, fair. I feel like the body shaming thing is always a topic. And I just, I feel bad for them because I just don't ever really see a consistent solution. Right. Oh, I, I, I always hear it come up and I'm like, when are we going to stop making it a problem? Because there's too much money behind it. Right. Yeah. It's all it's all capitalism behind it. I mean, it's and that's a that's a again, I'm back to blanket statements. But at the end of the, the day, you know what what produces dollars? And so, you know, if if we want to sell a particular brand of clothing or a particular um uh, perfume or a particular shoe or, or whatever, a particular car, right? Then we've got to make sure we have the right image when we go to sell that. And so therefore that image must be something of this variety. And that therefore that becomes the thing we attain. If you want to be a part of that, that business, that model, that opportunity, whatever, then you have to fit this this image. And so now that's the image that gets sold. That's must, must be what, what works. Right. And it's, it always comes down to what sells, what works. 
instead of it should come down to what's healthy and what makes you happy. You know, what, what, you know, I guess at the end of the day, if you're happy that you're a size zero and, and that works for you, great. That's fantastic. But are, are you there because you're feeling pressure based on what's around you? And that's kind of sad because now we, you enter into now it's not just fitness. Now it's, <laughs> now it's the mental <laughs> game, right? Exactly. So, yeah. It's mental fitness, mental fitness, mental, mental exercise. Yeah. Well, we could talk about this all day, you know, and I always try to keep this short and tight. Well, like t- you know, it's interesting. You, you put on there for me, you put on there. Uh, when I think about the two things that I always see that pop up when I see this thing pop up, my reminder, my, and I appreciate my reminder, <laughs> but my reminder in my calendar that pops up and it says, um, you know, ultra running expert and par lumber sales, sales manager. And so, uh, you know, I know we talked par lumber, but in the fitness aspect of it, you know, when we started down that road, I started thinking about it from the ultra running standpoint. And I will say that um, from the ultra running standpoint, looking at this for fitness, I've been blown away by uh, maybe in the last year or so, I've started really observing that there's a lot of people on the ultra running side that you might look at and go, yeah, they're not an ultra runner. And yet this ultra running side of things is way different than what we have commonly believed or perceived to be like uh, some elite athlete. Oftentimes we look at the Olympics or we look at, um, you know, certain professional sports and we see, well, that's my ideal. That's the, that's the professional athlete. But I go up to these ultra running events and I see people running a hundred miles and you would look at them and go, wait, you just did what? I mean, they look like maybe they're overweight. They got a little bit of a belly. Maybe they're, they're a little bigger. And you think, nah, they're, they're not, an, they're not an ultra athlete by what I deemed in my head as mm-hmm. being an ultra athlete. When in all reality, these guys are, and gals are killing it. And I think it's, it's, um, I wish more and more of the world knew of what exists out there and that was more publicized because ultra i mean at the end of the day you know people want to go watch football or basketball or baseball or things like that because typically speaking those are are events where you can see everything going on and it's all going on fast and it's all happening quickly and our little brains can can see it and it's as busy and it's it's entertainment right it's Mm -hmm. exciting an, an ultra marathon goes on for hours and hours and hours, and you don't get to spectate. You, you can't show up at, a, at an event and spectate an ultra marathon. It doesn't work that way. Even the backyard ones, you're still waiting for somebody to come back from their loop while they're out in the middle of nowhere. And it's, it's, it's fascinating to think that there's all of these amazing athletes out there who are doing amazing things. But mm-hmm. you and I might look at them and go, well, that's not what was in my head as that ideal athlete. You wouldn't have thought of them as an ultra athlete. But that's that's one of those places where, you know, how do you publish? How do you show that? How do you how do you promote that for for everybody out there so that, you know, you can help motivate and, and let people realize, hey, you don't you don't need to be the elite athlete instead you know what you can go do amazing things you you have the ability to do amazing things even if you think you don't qualify you do right so i think it, it's getting those people that aren't the traditional or the idea of what people think it's getting them to talk and getting them to speak up so because literally if we don't it's just you and i talking about it and it's still speculation Right. It just yeah. comes down to that. Well, it's just, well, it's just what they say. And what do they I really know? I'll go there. pull up. I need to, I need to share with you Myrna's um, site. She's on Twitter. I don't know if she's got any YouTube videos, but she's on Twitter. I'll go find her site. She's a, uh, um... okay. So again, not body shaming or anything, but I mean, she is what would appear to be an overweight black woman uh, who is an ultra marathoner. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you, as best as I can tell, Myrna is in amazing shape and she goes and runs ultra marathons and she does a bunch of other athletics as well. I think she's, she bikes and she skateboards or something else. I mean, whatever else she does, she's killing it. And she has got just the most fun loving, um, 
attitude and is super positive and upbeat. And she's joking all the time about different things. And it makes her a lot of fun to follow. And I've enjoyed following her on Twitter for the last couple of years as somebody that I see is, is breaking the, the mold of this idea, that ideal that says, well, you have to be this thing in order to do that thing. And she's like, no, you don't. And she's a perfect example of kind of what I've been talking about. Um, you know, the kind of person I, I, I wish I knew her, to be honest with you, more than just being some follower. I wish I knew her because she just seems like a, a really amazing person. So maybe that's what we do to wrap up our time when we come back after Thanksgiving is maybe we do a what does it take to get started? It's not as hard as it, as it takes. It's not as hard as it takes. I'd love to, to talk about that. I think that's a great way to... Yeah, maybe we, do, uh, maybe we do that when we come back. I mean, I, I do. I, I mean, I don't know if we've given enough time to Par Lumber, and I want to make sure we do that because I do want to make sure we give some time for that. But uh, we didn't answer one Par Lumber question today. Um, but I do want to make sure we do that too. But let's let's focus on that for next time after Thanksgiving. But I'm thankful for you and for Heather and for Mariah and for Brandon and your whole dang family, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. We're thankful. We're thankful for you. Trust me. You know, Thanks, I, I, Heather and I, we talked about it when we knew you were in some some interesting straits. We thought, I know Marty won't move up to Portland, but we got room for him. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it came up, man. I promise you. Really? It came up. <laughs> you know, I actually I didn't even think about that. But you know, realistically, I forgot. You guys always seem to have a little room for me. So I, I, do appreciate I, I got a futon downstairs and I could turn it into a, a real bed if it needed to be, uh, you know. So trust me, I. I would make room for you if necessary. Brother, I always appreciate you with all the love of my heart. So I will see you after Thanksgiving. Enjoy your time. Folks, if you want to check in for uh, Ask the Expert, we will not be on next week. We're taking the Thanksgiving break, but we'll be on the week after. So we yes. will see you then. Take awesome. care. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.